Buffalo plaid is a classic pattern in the colder months, and today I'm showing you how to paint this design from scratch. Hey everyone, thanks for clicking and welcome to Katie Failinger DIY. If we're just meeting, it's nice to meet you. I'm Katie, and on this channel, I show you all sorts of ideas, techniques, and tutorials like you'll see in this video with the grand goal of helping you make your home your happiest place. Sound intriguing? consider subscribing for new content every Thursday. And you can also ring the bell to get notified when new videos go up and that way you don't miss any content. So Buffalo plaid may be my favorite cold weather pattern. I love plaid just in general, but there's something so rustic about the Buffalo pattern that screams lake house in the Pocono mountains to me that I just always gravitate toward. Hashtag retirement goals. But how the heck do you make this pattern from scratch? allow me to demonstrate. It's actually easy to pull this off once you have the steps down, but you do have to pay attention to the details. Quickly, before we get into the tutorial, make sure you stay tuned to the end because I'm doing my first ever giveaway and I'll share all the details then. Okay, let's start with what you're going to need. And just a heads up, I've also linked an entire shopping list to everything that you'll need down in the description. And that way you don't have to write all this down or go hunting for all the materials on your own. Some scrap cardboard on which to paint, whatever project or board that you're painting. For this tutorial, I'm using a 12 by 12 wood panel that I found at Michael's. Paint in two base colors for your pattern. I'm going with traditional black and red for this example. Painter's tape or frog tape. You could also use masking tape. Four sponge brushes and a few plastic cups or paper plates to hold and mix your paint. Now, a quick note. One great thing about the wood panel I used was it didn't require any prepping. In other words, I didn't have to sand it down. But if you want to dive deeper into how to prep wood for painting and staining, I have a whole playlist of woodworking projects that you can browse through. So I'll link that up here and down in the description if you want to check that out. Okay, so we are going to be mixing paints for this project. So when you look at a finished buffalo plaid, you see the gradient of colors, right? There are two obvious base colors, in this case, red and black, and then these crossover shades. So we need to create those gradient shades between red and black. So let's start by pouring out our first color. Now that's going to be in the brightest shade that you have. In this case, that's of course my red paint. Make sure that you shake the paint really well first too. Next, I'm going to create a shade slightly darker than my base red. And to do that, I'll mix my red with just a little bit of black paint and stir that up so it's evenly mixed. For my third shade, I'm making an even deeper shade of red, more like a maroon. So this time, I'm mixing a good bit of black with my red paint. And finally, I'm pouring out my fourth color, which is just plain black. So you see the gradient from red to black here. And with each step I'm going to show you, we'll work our way through these paint shades from brightest to darkest. So that said, there are four main steps in this process, guys. One step for each color of paint. And my advice is to take each of these steps one at a time. Otherwise, this can start to get confusing because there are minor nuances and changes that come with each step, but they have a big impact on the finished product if you don't follow them exactly. So just stop and start the video as much as you need to, but I do have total confidence in you. All right, step number one. This one is definitely the easiest. You're simply going to paint the entire base of your project in the brightest color that you have. In this case, of course, that's the red. So I'll use one of my sponge brushes and coat the entire board in that festive red shade. You can do more than one coat if you want a really opaque look too. And we'll let that set until it's dry. Okay, step number two. And from this point on, these are the steps that you really need to pay attention to. So now we need to start creating our lines for that plaid look. And to do that, we're going to use our painter's tape. So rip a piece of tape that's long enough to cover a little more than the length of your project. And we'll start horizontally. So line up your tape right at the edge of your board and press it down firmly. Then I'll take another piece of tape, again, a little longer than the width of my board, and just barely place it down directly under my first piece of tape. But this time, you're not going to push this down. This second piece of tape is going to act as our placeholder for the space between stripes that we're taping off here so that all our lines come out even. Does that make sense? Next, you're going to rip off a third piece of tape the exact same way and line that right up against your placeholder tape and this time press it down firmly again. Then you can remove your placeholder tape and reuse it below the next line. So we'll just keep reusing that placeholder tape all the way down the board. In fact, I'll use it for the whole project in the subsequent steps that are yet to come.
Okay, now that all the tape is down for my first set of lines, I'm going to go in with a new clean sponge brush. And this time I'm using the next darkest shade. So it's that color that we mixed using mainly red and a hint of black. And just sponge the paint on and lightly stroke that brush back and forth to smooth out the paint to coat the stripes thoroughly. Now, once you've finished, you can carefully peel the tape off right away, even with the paint still wet. Just be careful, of course, not to touch it. And then we'll just let that dry before we move on. How are we doing so far? Do me a favor, drop a comment below if this is making sense to you. Just type, got it, so that I know you're with me. I have to reiterate, when I was figuring out how to do this, the thing that helped me most was going through each step in this process one at a time. Otherwise, the details started to get a little muddled. So keep stopping and starting this video as much as you need to. I won't be offended. <laughs> So that said, it's time for step number three. And this time we're switching up a few things. Most obviously we're using our third paint color. So that darker maroon shade, but we're also going vertical with our tape and we're reversing the order of our placeholder and regular strips of tape, okay? So this time you'll start with your placeholder going vertical. Again, I'm just reusing that same strip of tape that I used in the previous step. Line it right up against the edge of your board and then rip off a new piece of tape and press it firmly right next to your placeholder tape. Pull up the placeholder and move it over to the next space and then rip off yet another fresh piece of tape and press that down and keep working your way across the board with your placeholder and new strips of tape. Okay, now we can paint. And again, going in with another clean sponge brush, you're going to use that third darkest shade. For me, it's the maroon and use the same technique as before, sponging the paint at the edge of the tape to prevent bleeding and making light strokes with the sponge brush to smooth and spread all that paint out. And then once you're done painting for this step, just let the paint dry, but don't remove the tape this time. We actually need to keep those lines there for the fourth and final step with the tape still on. All right, home stretch. So for step number four, you should still have your tape on from the previous step and that paint should be dry. And now we're going to make a fresh set of horizontal lines to set up a grid. So just like we did with the very first set of lines, you're going to place your tape horizontally and you'll start with a regular piece of tape across the top of your board. Just below it, you'll put down your placeholder and below that, you'll place another fresh piece of tape. Just as before, work your way all the way down the board. And once all your tape is down, you'll go in with your fourth and final sponge brush, the darkest shade of paint, for me, of course, that's the black, and start blotting the color into all the open squares. Now, an important note, if you have any color bleeding, this is gonna show up really easily with your darkest shades. So be super careful on this particular step. I like to dab or stipple the paint on, and again, very lightly stroke the sponge across. It's a good idea to go in light with the paint too, and then just do a couple of coats until it's the opacity that you want. So I actually actually ended up doing three coats. And once you've finished with that fourth and final color, you can go ahead and peel off the tape, even when it's still wet. Of course, being very careful not to smudge your hard work. And you'll see how it comes together as you take off each piece of tape. Pretty cool stuff, right? So this is the finished product, and I did end up getting the slightest bit of bleeding through the tape, so a testament to how important it is to take care when you're painting with tape like this. Also, after I completed the main paint job, I decided I didn't like having the natural wood exposed, so I went in and painted the sides with one of the mixed colors that we had made. But now, guys, the moment you've all been waiting for, can I get like a trumpet sound or something? Let's talk about this giveaway. So I am giving away this painted buffalo plaid board to one of you. Yeah, the one I'm holding in my hands. And I'm going to customize it for you in white paint with whatever you'd like to put on it. Do you want your family name? Maybe you want a Christmas quote. Maybe you want a silhouette of a reindeer. Maybe you just want the word joy or peace or Noel. Maybe you want your monogram totally up to you. The shipping's on me. There's zero cost to you. This is just my way of saying a huge thanks for your support of this channel. And just a reminder, this is a 12 by 12 inch board. So you'll want to keep that in mind as you're brainstorming what you might want to put on this if you are in fact the winner. So here's how this works. It's pretty easy. You just need to do four simple things. One, you need to be subscribed to my channel. Two, hit the like button for this video. Three, 
write the word giveaway in the comments so that I know you want to be entered to win. And four, you need to join my creator community. So if you haven't joined that group yet, it's where all the hip and cool DIY junkies hang out. And it's where I share content that's exclusive to that group. So the link to sign up is below in the description. Now this giveaway is going to be closing Monday, December 2nd, 2019. So you have, as of the posting of this video, just over two weeks to enter. And that way I can also get the prize out to the winner before Christmas. I will be contacting the winner via email so you do need to give me a legit email address if you want to win okay but I have one final question for you how will you incorporate this technique in your DIY projects and what colors are you going to use Okay, that's two questions. I, for one, love the classic red and black look for the holidays, but think of the possibilities here. You could create a gorgeous plaid in spring pastel yellow or a really subtle gray and white that could work year round. You could do a really pretty gingham with navy and white. So lots of possibilities here. So drop a comment below with your ideas so we can all benefit from the inspiration. And in between videos, guys, stay in touch with me. I'm on all the social channels. They're all listed below for you. And I really do always love hearing from you. You can also check out my website, katiefailinger.com to see what else I'm working on right now. Meanwhile, don't forget to share this video with your fellow creators, subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when new videos go up. But for now, thanks so much for watching, guys. Keep creating your happy place and I'll see you next Thursday. Damn light. Ah, glare. Buffalo plaid, yeah. But I do have total <laughs> hashtag retire. <laughs> this is what you get for trying to get fancy failing her. What? What? Clean sponge sponge pro. What's a sponge brush? How important it is to Kate. To, to talk correctly, maybe? I don't know. We can all benefit from that inspiration. Benefit from the inspiration. So far. How to prep wood. How to, how to prep wood? Well, hell, that doesn't roll off the tongue. That is weird. Trippy. Okay. Yeah, oh, crud. So we can all benefit from that. Benefit from that. I did it again. Let's knock this bitch out. Do, 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 do.